My name is Lori Otter, and uh, I have the pleasure of being your First Lady, but prior to that, I also had, a, had the pleasure and the opportunity and the great honor of being a teacher in the Idaho public school system. It is a, a great school system that we have. I uh, have taught for 12 years in Idaho, a year out of state. I have my associates from this actual college right here, from Hello to Twin Falls County, my home county. Tom's talking about, especially um, about the education part of it. I got my associate's degree from CSI, I have my bachelor's degree from Boise State University, and I have my master's in education curriculum instruction uh, and ed education leadership from Northwest Nazarene University. Um, I spent most, I've, I've taught every grade, I've taught uh, elementary, middle school, high school, some junior college courses. And uh, so I've been involved in education. It's been my career, it's my passion, it's my avocation, and it's something um, that aside from politics that I know a little bit about. I have been the boots on the ground, the tennis shoes in the PE classroom. I've been the high heels in the classroom. I've, I am the teacher on the ground that this law and these laws would affect. And to be honest with you, uh, there was a time uh, when this was going on that I was very aware that this was a, very impactful of my career, that I had personally, independent of anything that my husband has accomplished, this was what I had accomplished professionally as a female for my career. And so when all of this started coming down, uh, to be honest with you, I just thought, if I ever want a job in this state, I better keep my mouth shut and just kind of see what happens here. And I thought, I'll just be Switzerland in this. Uh, and then I went to a hearing. I went to a hearing uh, downstairs at, at the Capitol building, and I watched uh, teachers that I had the utmost respect for, because I do have the utmost respect for education. I think it's a calling. I think it requires a, an unbelievable amount of passion, energy, discipline, and patience. And I saw people that um, I respected saying things and using children in a way that I personally found deplorable. And that was um, bringing kids in and telling them that they would, their favorite teacher would be replaced with the laptop if these laws passed. And uh, that's why I'm here today and that's why I'm speaking to you. And I, uh, I allow me to take off my first lady hat and do my first lady disclaimer at the same time, which is, in this case, I, I think I'm pretty safe, but it, the words of the first lady expressed by the First Lady are not always those necessarily held by the Governor. That's my disclaimer. <laughs> However, in this case, I think we're, we're doing pretty good. And, uh, and my other one is, I'm not speaking for all teachers, but I am speaking for this teacher. And once you're a teacher, you're always a teacher. It's, a, it's like I said, a special calling. So I had decided that I was going to stay out of it, and then I went downstairs, and if you know me well, you know that when my I get a little irritated. I, I either, I'm either in or I'm out, and I'm in, folks, because uh, there are some things going on that uh, need to be addressed. So let me back up a little bit, and I had, I had uh, graduated from college, graduated from high school a little a few years ago, like Tom, and uh, when I graduated from high school, my, my teacher, or my, excuse me, my parents gave me a top-of-the-line Smith Corona typewriter. I graduated in 85, not that long ago, folks. Went to CSI, and uh, my first year uh, in my teaching degree, um, I was asked to do a program to use technology in the classroom, uh, and I had to design a fractions lesson that I could use on a computer that was bigger than this podium, and it was on a floppy disk that was about this big. My first year in teaching, I had no computers in my classroom. My last year teaching, I had a bank of 15 in my classroom and I was writing every grant I could to get a smart board and every um, projector that I could in my classroom because I realized the importance of what technology could do for me as a teacher and help me work smarter and not harder and I've always been a big fan of that. Um, and so when I left my last year, I had technology everywhere. I got my education leadership, I was an admin, 
The first year that I went into the intern pool for the Meridian School District, I was handed an iPad, and that's what I would use for all of my evaluations and everything else. That was in 10 years. So when you, when you feel the pushback from education, sometimes it's not the theory of what's happening. From my perspective in education, I think that it's just the amount of change that has been brought forward for teachers so quickly at such a rapid pace that they are really feeling the overwhelming, the overwhelmingness of technology. And I think when teachers do their homework and they see and they learn, and it's not like these laws have come forward without the support. You know, nine million in technology, four million in in-service development when I was a teaching. That's what I wanted. I wanted more resources for my state, for my classroom. I wanted um, better uh, professional development to make me a better teacher for my kids. And I wanted somebody to tell me that I was doing a good job every now and again. So tell me how students come first does not meet those three goals. They do. These laws meet those three goals. And, and the reason that um, I'm really so passionate about this is that, you know, People talk about, well, they don't, want the edu they don't want the technology. As an administrator in a school building, you work really hard to make sure your school building is built in thirds. A third brand new teachers, a third teachers keeping it all together, and a third veteran teacher. So that when you roll over your teachers and they, they retire, you don't have a whole school full of people that don't know what's going on. And so I would tell you that when you get teachers or schools that say, uh, we don't want this, I would be pretty surprised that there's not a portion that does. Because not all teachers um, have not had experience with, uh, with technology. If you go through, if, you know, if I'm doing a fractions lesson 20 years ago, what are they doing now with our student teachers? And so it, it allows a blended environment, a blended family within a building for, for people to learn from each other. And that's crucial in an, an environment in a, in a building. And it's also crucial for kids because kids do not do school the same way that we used to do school because everybody comes to education with their own personal experience of what education is. You know, and I, and I love to use the analogy of a PE teacher. How many of you had a good PE teacher? How many of you had a bad teacher, PE teacher? If you have a good PE teacher, you probably are pretty active. If you have a bad PE teacher, you probably couldn't get you to run around the block. Um, and that's the effect, and it's, every, it's a very emotional issue. But what I can tell you right now is that kids aren't doing school the same way that we did school. And I'm going to show you a quick clip um, that Camille, Camille hopefully is going to bring up. A very quick clip on how that's uh, affecting. So this is a, a school in Park City, Utah. And it's a, uh, how many of you uh, ran for student body office? How many of you are running for office that were at the campaign school yesterday? Quite a few of you. I'm happy to see that you didn't go screaming into the hills. That was, that's a good sign. So you're still here, but if you if you were running for student body president when you were in high school, uh, you made posters, you handed out gum, you, you did something. Let me tell you, let me show you a quick example of what it looks like for kids nowadays with technology running for student body president. for student body president. It's an application that, uh, that, that you can use that takes a picture and promotes the... as well as using it, and, uh, and I hope that some of those people in the campaign school used it. 
So the three tiers, I'm going to quickly, and then uh, I'll, tie, I'll wrap it up. Pay for performance. So for Ms. this is my school teacher talking. This is me. On the three tiers of pay for performance, technology, and collective bargaining of a tenure issue, on the pay for performance, um, you're being measured on growth, not proficiency, which is huge. That means that when a kid comes into my room, I'm responsible for moving that kid. That's my job. That's what I signed up for. That's what I studied for. That's what I learned how to do. I should be able to do that, and I should be rewarded for doing that. And I should be able to quantitatively tell anybody where Junior came in, what he knew when he got here, and what I taught him when he left. As a teacher, I should be able to defend it and do that. kids. And the money that I can earn, well, you know, who doesn't like a bonus? I mean, you're doing your job, you get rewarded, pay for performance speaks for itself. I, I can't think of a reason why my profession would be against this. I mean, the only profession that would, like, vote to overturn pay raises. I don't get it. Technology in the classroom. Applications for classrooms. How are you going to make this? How are you going to use it? This, this kid's already using it. This issue isn't about what's best for, it is about what's best for kids, but they are, the other side is not necessarily worried about what's best for kids, they're worried about what's best for teachers. There's a big difference. And this is not going to be hard for kids, it's going to be hard for adults. Because the kids know how to do all this stuff. It's hard for us, it's not hard for them. And when you talk about technology in the classroom, Intervention is huge. Being able to reach kids where they are, that's how you move kids in an educational environment. There's really no other way to do it. You have to reach them where they are. Technology gives you accesses that you would never have had uh, at other levels. Um, and then the, it allows you to drill down instruction. And then the last one, collective bargaining and tenure. I'm a teacher in the classroom. I have a contract. Newsflash, 10 years in the Meridian School District, I signed a letter of intent that I was coming back the next year, that I had a job. I didn't sign my contract until February or March. So, uh, you know, that tells you how er, misconstrued some of that collective bargaining is and the things that were going on. So when you talk about, you know, 21, 21 school districts are still talking things out, well, we have 114 school districts in the state, so 98 of them, you know, 93 of them have figured it out. And it made it streamlined and a lot quicker. So when you, when you talk about tenure, that's like saying, um, I don't want the best doctor to work on me, I want the one who's been doing it the longest. <laughs> I'm sorry, you had a heart surgery? I want the guy that just got out of college and knows what's going on. I don't want the guy that's been there 50 years. Tenure allows the best to stay in the buildings based on the evaluation of the administrative personnel in the building. It allows you to know what uh, qualities your teachers have. And it allows you to move forward to make sure you have the best ones in the classroom for your kids. So I'm gonna, just going to close uh, real quick and just, you know, there's a couple things. I just, I'm amazed that sometimes that uh, people are, are okay striving for mediocrity. It's never made sense to me in my life. It's not kind of not in my DNA. And so you have to move forward, and this is so crucial. And so if you have teachers out there who have legitimate concerns, they are good people. They go to work every day trying to make a difference in the lives of kids. That's why they're there. And so when you talk to them, know that they are coming from, in, in most cases, a very sincere interest to help. But they're not always getting the full story and they're not always getting the facts, and they need to do their own homework like all of us do. Because frankly, in this issue, for Idaho's kids and Idaho's education, failure is not an option. Yeah. Isn't she wonderful? Wow, that's just going to be a great uh, asset as we go around with these um, this effort. So, so I'm told that we have time for one question. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the 60s.
sake of time, we probably better leave it there. And, uh, you'll both get the dinner tonight, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank so you let, let, me, let me just tell you this then, and thank Lori again. But uh, the governor and I and Lori and, and others are uh, leading this effort. The governor uh, has filed the paperwork to form a committee. Uh, the governor's here somewhere, isn't he? Governor? There he is. paperwork has been filed to form the committee, yes, for Idaho education. Uh, and it's important that people understand that we vote yes. I think some people think that since the union started this, that we're going to vote no to tell them no. The fact is, we need people to vote yes. That means we support these laws. Uh, the paperwork has been filed. Folks, not too many years ago, the teachers union tried to uh, pass a, a proposition to put one penny on the sales tax. You remember that? They spent over a million dollars. They're going to spend a lot of money to try to overturn these laws. They got their tails kicked in Wisconsin. They can't suffer two defeats, right? So they think they can't suffer two defeats. So they are going to draw a line in the sand here in Idaho. Uh, we have to make sure that we're prepared and we do everything we can. We need to let our teachers know that we recognize that they are the solution, not the problem. Don't let the union convince them that